On today's episode of Planting Seeds, we are taking you back to season one to show you where some of our entrepreneurs have reached today and how they are going to build a sustainable future for themselves, for Trinidad and Tobago and the wider Caribbean. While we don't have enough time to tell you all of our great stories, let's take a look at a few of them thus far. Roxana Marlow, founder of Trini Winnie, is by far one of our most vivacious and outgoing Planting Seeds entrepreneurs. Trini Winnie joined Planting Seeds in season one and appeared twice on the show. The first time she did not gain an investment as the investor panel found that her idea for a mobile hot dog stand did not quite make the cut. They felt that she needed to get into manufacturing instead of creating a mobile hot dog stand to become a bit more scalable. Roxana Marlow did not give up and made sure to get herself back on the show, taking into consideration all of the advice that was provided to her. She caught the eye of a partner at Ernst & Young, Maria Daniel, and gained an investment for $300,000 to kickstart his sausage manufacturing business. Roxanne and Maria have been working side by side ever since, and under the consultation of her investor and mentor, they were able to perfect the manufacturing process, purchase the necessary machinery, and now, Trini Winnie has hit the shelves of grocery stores nationwide and they're now looking outwards to export Trini Winnie's around the wider Caribbean and one day into international markets. So today I'm here at Sangu Grandi and I'm visiting Roxanne Umalo of Trini Winnie. So let's take a look at how Trini Winnie is doing today and check out the operation. So welcome to Trini Winnie production area. This is one of the many machines that Trini Winnie uses on a daily basis to right. our sausages. Mm -hmm. It's a mixer. Okay. What it does, it helps us mix all the ingredients, like the seasoning, which comprises of the garlic, the pimento, the ginger, or shana benny, together with our fish if we're doing the fish links, or veggie if we're doing the veggie links. Just mix the ingredients together so you can get that true trini flavor, as well as we do 30 pounds at 5 minutes a time, so we roughly get around 150 or 120 From this one machine. If we do it, say roughly within an hour time. Right. Well, that's great. So I know you have so many different machines here. Show me one of your next favorite ones. Well, you know they say start with this and you end with your last. So let me take you to our vacuum machine. Right. Our vacuum sealer seals out all the unwanted bacteria within our packs because right. you know our product doesn't have any preservative. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that our lifespan within our products stay within our standard of health and to make sure that our consumers enjoy it as well. So in terms of improving the efficiency of this whole process, how many packs does this machine actually turn out for you a day? Presently what we do is 4,000 packs a day. Right. We have to make sure and keep our product as fresh as possible. Right. So we give a vacuum in time of six packs for about a minute and a half. Okay, great. So the organic sausages, 4,000 packs per day, improving your manufacturing process and this tiny little machine does all of that. Yeah, it's small but it works as well. It yeah. can do a lot and trust me, it's very, very efficient. Great, and I can see you just scaling up and just having more of these machines here. So 4,000 to 8 to 12 and you just keep going, right? You know, our future plan is to have something fully automatic where you can just have the sausages go through it and it does it on its own where presently we have someone who's doing it manually right and you know we are in the process of growing growing and that's what we're here to do making sure that Trini Winnie is here to stay and our next visit who knows you will be visiting us as our warehouse exactly <laughs> I like the sound of that hi my name is Roxana Malo I am the owner of Trini Winnie the founder of the first veggie slash fish links that I made right here in Trinidad and Tobago. And my son played a great part in it because one, he doesn't eat regular sausages because of what he Googled and saw. So we decided to go to the kitchen and come up with a formula that would look or taste close to a sausage. So we make and produce links. Our links has no sodium nitrate, they have no collagen, they are gluten free, no preservative as well as artificial flavoring and they are all local, locally made. When you go to the supermarkets and you see these Trini Winnie links and you taste it, you will know that you're tasting something that's very close to home made. It's like making it in your own kitchen. And again, I continue to tell people once as a young entrepreneur, you have a dream, you have a vision, you see your business growing and you get the opportunity to go and plant in seeds, go at it. So you may not just get an investment of money, 
where you would start up your business but guidance you would get advice you would you would your knowledge would grow so much as a young entrepreneur that when you leave planting seeds you feel you own one of the biggest company in the world trust me because of the advice the guidance and the people that you meet who open so much doors to you they would guide you keep a rapport with the staff of planting seeds and listen to them because they are the experts I would say in this they would guide you they have the connections they have the openings so we've come to the end of our visit to Trini Weenie and I have to say I'm so proud of her I'm so amazed at all that she's achieved and all that she's done and I can't leave without trying one of my own Trini Weenies so here we go mmm now that is a Trini Weenie the best Weenies in Trini Imagine being able to earn more. Imagine getting the chance to live more. Imagine living a life where you can see more. Imagine you with JMMB, your best interest at heart. Feel truly cared for a key to creating a business that can grow quickly. One way of accomplishing this is by offering a great benefits package. Beacon Insurance wants to see your small business grow, which is why they have created the Be Better Plan, tailored to businesses with 3 to 35 employees. This service is simple and easy to use with an online portal that provides information on plan eligibility, claim status and benefits. Visit us today at www.beacon.co.tt to learn about how you can grow your small business and retain the industry's best and brightest by offering them Beacon's Be Better Employee Benefits Plan. pages make a difference in your business? Here's what one of our customers had to say. Hi, I'm Amira Hussain, General Manager at Delta Windows and Doors Limited. Delta has been in existence for over 25 years and we've been advertising with the Yellow Pages since our inception. As our business has evolved, so has our advertising in the Yellow Pages. Our customers can now access us via print, website and the mobile app. The Yellow Pages has made it easy for customers to find us and continues to help our business increase sales and market share. This must be in the catalog. But this one is so much more affordable. This one ran out! Very Exciting Things Limited, the Caribbean's leading supplier of promotional products. Khalil Bryan, founder of Caribbean Transit Solutions, a Barbados-based company with a transport app appeared on Planting Seeds Season 1 and was able to gain a $25,000 US dollar investment from investor Joseph Rahal. Khalil continues to grow Caribbean Transit Solutions organically and through his continued relationship with Planting Seeds, was able to meet up with a partner at Structure Capital, Jacob Shea, whose venture capital firm was one of the first investors into Uber. Let's see what advice Jacob had to give Khalil on his mobile application 
focused on penetrating the transport industry. Coolio, it's great to meet you. Um, I've heard a lot about Caribbean Transit Solutions and why don't you tell me some more about it? Great to meet you as well, Jacob. So Caribbean Transit Solutions was conceptualized with providing uh, real-time information on buses. Uh, we've since evolved to now provide real-time information on buses and taxis since one is an easy substitute for the other. And how do people find you today? Do they, do they have to install this or do they apply this hardware on their solutions yeah. and their buses? How does this actually yeah. operate? So we've got currently two customer placing platforms and one B2P B2B platform, which ultimately will integrate to create one single platform. So the customer facing platforms are Beep Cap and Beep Bus. We have a bunch of underutilized assets, whether the, the taxis, there are too many taxis just sitting idle. So we thought well, we can give people easier access to those. Mm -hmm. uh, and then with the buses, people stand at bus stops, have no idea when the bus is coming. So they, their time is the underutilized asset. They, they waste a lot of time. So, and then finally we've got the, the tracking platform which we needed to be able to provide that data stream to the buses. Mm -hmm. So that's a hardware device, whereas the other two are, are applications. BeepCab and BeepBus are available on the, on, both on the Android store, mm -hmm. and then BeepCab of course is available for iOS. And then the EasyTrack solution is much more of a SaaS solution, a software as a service solution. You know, all these founders always want to be like this, the, the app on everyone's phone. Right. So right. for us though, the long-term strategy we see success is, is the B2B side. So I'm glad you're capturing this data, working with the cities and then also the buses. It's like, I see a lot of great data in that rich data. So we can start building these new cities and these islands as they can use this data. And then also, how do you get people to opt in to this, right? So right. like beyond the buses, can, can a normal person just put this in their car? Like what's, the, what's the incentive for that person to actually help you out? The next, uh, I guess, logical step for us. We're working currently with insurance companies because we, we know that the, uh, the governments can't afford to put all these devices in buses. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, there's an, there's an owner and then there's an insurer. You can't operate these vehicles without insurance. So we now work with the insurance companies and they find it immensely useful because they can now uh, reduce the risk that they manage with these buses that are traveling up and down the road every day. It's one of the most risky assets that they underwrite. Right. Now we help them reduce that risk, mm -hmm. then we get the data and, and we are able to help them then structure their policies so it's a win-win for both of us. So in Silicon Valley in San Francisco, um, I'm a partner at a fund called Structure Capital and we focus on early stage startups. We're in about 140 companies and we're kind of known in the Valley because we were first round investors into Uber. Um, the reason why is it's because we really believe in the markets of like excess capacity, unlized assets. So when we heard about Uber, um, we just really realized that the potential was going on and especially in San Francisco, we had a huge problem with cabs and getting around places quickly for meetings to meet people like you yeah. and founders. Yeah. And so for us, we made the investment early on. We just saw the potential that there is growth in the marketplace. And then there's a huge stat right now, by 2020, half the, half the US employee base will actually be contractors and freelancers. Right. So that's powering the whole part of the shared economy space right. and, and what's going on. So I was really happy to talk to you about this because what you're doing here in the Caribbean is reflective to things that we saw back in San Francisco and other places where we felt that we saw the need for this. Right. So what do you think about what, have Uber, what Uber has done since then? I mean, Uber has done a phenomenal job at getting people to think differently about how they use their assets. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably one of their biggest, uh, biggest accomplishments. But I think they've done a fantastic job, um, but I think they've also spurred a lot more innovation just in that shared economy space as well. Right. Um, pe just because people are thinking, well, what, do I, what else do I have that I can share with somebody else? So why have you seen like, corporate America companies coming into new places for acquisitions? Like, have you, have you seen that happen in the islands? Is there some potential of what you're doing today where the data that you have and what you're building today is something that would be attractive to someone like an Uber to come in and either, most likely probably wouldn't partner, but they would look into acquiring assets right. or figuring out what you're doing. So the value of that for you is potential as a founder who's done something pretty amazing in, in a very, yeah. you know, segment of markets, like what would you feel would evolve of your brand and how would that go forward? Uber, as I understand it, is very much a single player in that game. They, they, they want to dominate that market. Uh, we would love to still be involved, but you know, from a benefit to shareholders perspective, if they said, we want to acquire this, sure they could. We could then focus on the buses, but we see that it has to be this holistic combination of not just, not just taxis, not just buses, but both. So they could actually acquire the consumer side, but then you would keep the B2B side. We, we would, that's yeah. what we would look like. Yeah, that's a, that's I like what the idea, have. I think it makes sense. Cleo, it was great to meet you today. I'm looking forward to watch, watching what's going on and follow you from outside. I'm really happy to meet you at the Planting Seeds uh, show. I, th I think what they're doing 
locally is really strong for founders like you who have this opportunity and this idea and want to innovate. So I think you know just just yourself appearing on this show, I think will just akin will innovate and encourage other people to do this, and rather than just myself. Like they want to see a founder who's local, yeah. who's coming up the ranks. So I think this is great that you be on the show. So appreciate your. Jacob, really appreciate your time. It's been fantastic meeting you, hearing about some of the companies that you're interested in. Great yeah. to meet you. Great to meet you, right. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Can Yellow Pages make a difference in your business? Here's what one of our customers had to say. Hi, I'm Amira Hussain, General Manager at Delta Windows and Doors Limited. Delta has been in existence for over 25 years, and we've been advertising with the Yellow Pages since our inception. As our business has evolved, so has our advertising in the Yellow Pages. Our customers can now access us via print, website and the mobile app. The Yellow Pages has made it easy for customers to find us and continues to help our business increase sales and market share. This must be in the catalog. But this one is so much more affordable. This one ran out! Very Exciting Things Limited, the Caribbean's leading supplier of promotional products. Imagine being able to earn more. Imagine getting the chance to live more. Imagine living a life where you can see more. Imagine you with JMMB, your best interest at heart. Chanel Five Hills appeared on Planting Seeds Season 1. While she did not get an initial investment, Planting Seeds leveraged their connections with investor Gerald Aboud to ensure that Chanel took the necessary steps to get onto the shelves of Starlight. The initial packaging of her product was not of an international quality at the time. So, we went a step further and attained a sponsorship in services from Signpost to help Chanel improve her packaging in order to ensure that her product is of an international standard. Today, Chanel is moving forward with Dejeunesse, pushing her locally made soaps and is diversifying her product lines to ensure that Dejeunesse has a sustainable and profitable future. So I'm here today at Starlight Pharmacy and I'm very excited because I'm going to see Chanel 5's new product on the shelf for the very first time. Now in season one of Planting Seeds, she was not able to gain an investment because the investors felt as though she needed to work on her production capacity a bit more. However, she did get the attention of Gerald Aboud, who's committed to putting local products on the Starlight shelves. And through Planting Seeds, she was able to make this connection and get her product on the shelf. Now there was a lot of work to be done. We had to do a lot of repackaging, a lot of relabeling, and we got a lot of help from Signpost to get this done and get Chanel on the shelf. And today, I'm going to see it for the first time. It's been almost a year and I'm very, very excited to see her grow and expand her small business. 
So here it is, Dejeunesse on the shelves of Starlight. This is probably one of the most rewarding times for planting seeds because we actually see our entrepreneurs grow and expand and we love it. It's been almost a year now and we've done a lot of work to get this product here. So I'm really, really happy and I'm really, really proud of Chanel. She even has a little Made in Trinidad and Tobago sign on the back of it, which is absolutely fantastic. So make sure to come to Starlight and pick up one of Chanel's soaps. Well, the reason why I came on to planting seeds was because I had a desire in order to um, move out of my standard, current standard of living. Um, coming from a um, kind of poor family, um, I saw that I needed to push myself out of the poverty line and make something better for myself. So when I came on to planting seeds and I pitched in front of those lovely investors, I was extremely nervous, but I did what I have to do. and. Although I did not gain an investment, which was a little disappointing at the point in time, I got a great opportunity to be able to distribute my products at Starlight, which I was very grateful for. And that led to a numerous amount of um, outlets after. Getting the products on the shelves of Starlight was not as easy as it, may, as it may sound. We had to go back to the enjoying board with the help of planting seeds to restructure my packaging and restructuring my Caribbean fusion lines of soap. So now we have a steadfast five um, products, specific products, to cater for different needs. So our Caribbean fusion lines of soap target people who want a more natural approach to their health because it takes 26 seconds for the products in your bath and body products to enter your bloodstream. So we are giving people an alternative choice of choosing our products instead of the commercial products in order to have a more natural approach to their way of living. So the future of Dijonas to me is very bright. Um, right now we are in the planning stage of even wanting to go um, across the border of Trinidad and Tobago. So even right now we are in negotiations with a hotel in St. Lucia as well. So Dijonas Bath & Body will not just be a local brand, but it will be international as well. Yellow Pages make a difference in your business? Here's what one of our customers had to say. Hi, my name's Nadine Johnson and I'm the Senior Brand Manager Marketing for Courts for Unicoma Trinidad Limited. We've been advertising in the Yellow Pages for over two decades. And with our growing number of almost 40 stores nationwide in Trinidad and Tobago, we found that advertising in the Yellow Pages is the perfect way for us to reach our customers and for our customers to find us. And because the Yellow Pages offers multiple ways for our customers to reach us, we found that it helps us maximize sales and drive business results. Imagine being able to earn more. Imagine getting the chance to live more. Imagine living a life where you can see more. Imagine you with JMMB, your best interest at heart. Roshan Pancho, founder of Ron Block, is no stranger to planting seeds. He applied to the planting seeds program during season one and was not awarded an investment. However, planting seeds did not give up on him as we found that this interlocking block was a great solution to reduce construction costs as he also has the potential to bring in foreign income through export. After a year of working with Ron, we decided to bring him back onto Planting Seeds Season 2 to pitch to the panel of investors. Our founder, Stephanie Pemberton, sat on the panel representing Joel Monty Pemberton and committed him to an investment into Ronblock. 
after a full financial review of Ron Block's books, sales and manufacturing potential, Joel Pemberton decided to proceed with the investment. So let's take a look at how that negotiation went. So Ron, it's good to meet up again. All right, um, so it was a pleasure. We had a really fruitful meeting you last time. And as we had discussed, you know, you, you were looking to raise 2.5 million. And uh, we discussed how could you sort of reduce that ask, to be to use your capital more efficiently, to start building more bricks bottom line to generate internally generated cash that we can reinvest in the business to grow it as again signal our front cash. So I'm really curious to find out where you are in terms of relooking those numbers and let's let's see what you have to put forward. Okay, well we have re revisited the initial amount asked for to get the first operation that we had mentioned going. However, um, we cannot cut back on that because if we do, the, we won't be able to start off properly and may run into problems. However, another option has worked up, which would require a lot less. Uh, this, this opportunity may cost approximately 1.5 to get the operation going. It um, wouldn't include the purchasing of a block machine or even the infra infrastructure setup. It's already there. All we may need to do is some minor repairs on the machine itself, acquire some equipment, which would include forklift and, and the operating capital. Monty, I have outlined the details of the second option, um, and I would like for you to take a look at it. Right. Well, thanks, Ron. Well, Ron, this is quite interesting, and, and what I must say is, when when I look at investments, it's very important that we have a lot of collaboration because sometimes you may start over X, and through conversations and opportunities, you might end up with Z, which tends to be could be a better product. And I think what we're seeing here is an opportunity here where one, you could actually deploy less capital up front, so you put less capital at risk. Um, two, you could actually start manufacturing box faster than you previously envisaged. Um, so you have de-risked the project a bit, uh, which means you get cash sooner than later, uh, which is important to everyone concerned. So I quite like this opportunity. I think we should try to look at it in some more depth to see if we could close off on this opportunity versus the other. Um, in terms of the, 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 the capital requirement of circa 1.5 million, um, I'm willing to commit uh, 0.5 million towards this and the other 1 million we could put together a very small consortium of acquaintances and interested investors um, to really close off on this opportunity. Thank you, Monty, for committing to Ron Block and believing in the, the, this project. As I've been, you know, working on it for so so long. You know, I've been in season one on the Planted Seed Show, and unfortunately, things didn't work out. Right? But I've been persistent and, and, and not giving up. Like now I feel as though I'm brain green for the amount of time I've, and, and years I've invested in this. You know, and finally, I, I, I feel relief for, for you know, securing an investor to assist in moving or pushing Ron Block forward. So Ron, it's certainly a pleasure. And I must say that um, when I invest uh, a very old uh, mentor of mine said, you know, I don't invest in numbers and spreadsheets, I invest in people. And certainly, you know, um, you, you've really given me that um, comfort, your perseverance over the last eight years, um, your good times, and certainly had a few failures you've learned, and you're really passionate to really see this forward, and that gives me great comfort. Um, so I really look forward to working with you um, to structure the consortium, um, to see this forward, and believe it or not, our country needs entrepreneurs like yourself to set an example for other entrepreneurs um, and that's how we we'll help to create a better Trinidad and Tobago in the end um, for you, me, our kids, our grandkids and for the life of Trinidad and Tobago. So uh, thank you for actually um, looking at me as well. Um, it is really a pleasure. Okay,